Lesson 2.2, Characteristics of Quadratic Functions. How do you find the max and min of quadratic functions? And how do you graph using intercepts? So now we're going to review Algebra 1 in intercept form. So if you remember, the form for intercept form is f of x equals, you have an a number on the outside. In the parentheses, you have x minus p and then x minus q. Remembering these have to be subtractions. So it's whatever you're minusing on the inside. So let's go ahead and graph this function right here. This is currently not in intercept form because he's not a subtraction. So let's go ahead and rewrite it so we can see it a little bit easier. So I've got negative two. I need x minus some number and then x minus some number. This was already a minus, so I know that inside here is a one. This was not a minus. What would I be subtracting when I simplified it and it turned into a plus three? This had to have been a negative three. So I have x minus a negative 3 and x minus a 1. This is true intercept form, so I can identify my p and q a little easier. So this is going to be my p, and this is going to be my q. You have to remember that the minuses need to stay on the outside. So very first thing I need to do when I graph, you always need to find your axis of symmetry first. Now, how do I find my axis of symmetry in intercept form? It's just your P and your Q. So my P is a negative 3. My Q is a 1. So here's my P and my Q. Axis of symmetry has an equation. It's X equals P plus Q in the numerator all divided by 2. I want the middle of my P's and Q's. So X equals a negative 3 plus 1 all divided by 2. So I have x equaling a negative 1 as my axis of symmetry. So I need to come over here and I need to graph my axis of symmetry. So x equals negative 1. After I've found my axis of symmetry, I then need to figure out where on that axis does my vertex live. To solve for your vertex, you are going to solve for f of x, just like we did in standard form. So f of x was this problem. I'm now solving it when x was negative 1, so I want to know where on here does it live. So I found it to be 8. So my vertex is the coordinate point negative 1, 8. So negative 1, 8 lives right here. In intercept form, you actually have x-intercepts. Your x-intercepts are your p and your q. My p, x-intercept, is the coordinate point negative 3, 0. My q, x-intercept, coordinate point, is 1, 0. So I cross right here at negative 3, and I crossed right here at 1. They are intercepts. Verify that they are the in-between point with the axis of symmetry. And then you have a curving line just connecting them. And you have now graphed it. So this was the highest it went, which meant I had the max, and it cut at the 8, so my max is at 8. If my max was at 8, that means my y was also looking at the 8s. The parabola lived all below, which meant it was less than or equal to. You found your two intercepts already, and because you went forever into the left and forever into the right, our domain is all real numbers. Our second practice problem, I see that this is already in intercept form because I already have subtraction in both sides, which means that this 6 is my p, and that means that this 2 is my q. So we're going to go ahead and solve. The very first thing you have to find is the axis of symmetry. You have to identify your P and identify your Q to find the axis of symmetry. The equation for axis of symmetry in intercept form is P plus Q divided by 2. So I have 6 plus 2 all divided by 2. So my axis of symmetry is at 4. So my axis of symmetry is at 4. So drawing my axis of symmetry line at 4. Now I need to figure out where on this line my vertex lives. And to figure out where on the line the vertex lives, you need to solve for f of x. And you're solving it for the value that you just found. Typing this into my calculator, I get negative 1. So my vertex is at the coordinate point 4, negative 1 which means my vertex lives right here. I lastly just need to figure out what my x-intercepts are, and because this is intercept form, your x-intercepts are already given to you. 
Your P of 6 tells you you have an intercept at 6, 0. And your Q at 2 tells you you have an intercept at 2, 0. So I cross right here at 2 and I cross right here at 6. Notice both of them are exactly in the middle with the axis of symmetry. So my intercept was 6, 0 and 2, 0. Connect it with a nice smooth line. Now my max, min, domain, and range. This green line is the vertex. It crosses right there at negative 1. It is the lowest it goes. So I know that I have a min at negative 1. Because it's the lowest that it goes, that means the u always lives above it, which meant I'm always bigger than the negative 1. This negative 1 was the y of the vertex, which is the min max, and it's also the range. It's how we found the green line. Our domain goes forever in the right and forever in the left, so my domain is all real numbers. Page 7 has two problems that I want you to do for independent practice.